scientific physics has taught us, there can be no work without the generation of heat. When our bodies undergo any strenuous activity, we sweat. We sweat because we're trying to keep our body temperature low since we simply cannot handle high temperatures. Without sweating, our organs would simply fail on us if we were ever to try working out or going jogging. The same goes for computers. If the hardware is doing something, it's going to get hot. Only hardware can't sweat so it's up to us to keep it cool. The components that generate the most heat, like the CPU and the GPU, have active cooling, while others that don't generate as much heat, like RAM sticks and motherboards, simply have heat sinks and heat spreaders. But there is a lot more you can do to lower the temperature of your PC, from installing additional case fans to applying one of the many products that help with heat dissipation of the CPU. And herein lies our problem. It's easy to get overwhelmed by the sheer number of products available to us that help to keep the CPU cool. From the commonly known as thermal paste and pads, to the less prominent thermal grease, thermal compound, heat paste, heat sink paste, and more. That is why the topic of today's video will be all about making the distinction between all of these products and explaining what each of them does. So without any further ado, let's begin. First things first, let's make the situation a bit simpler. Aside from thermal pads, all the other products we've listed are one and the same thing. They're all synonyms for what's most commonly referred to as thermal paste. Thermal grease is the second most popular expression. The rest are not nearly as common, but they still help cause a lot of confusion. So the only real distinction we need to make is between thermal pastes and thermal pads. Hopefully this should make the whole ordeal a lot easier. And now that we're all on the same page, let's talk thermal pastes. Thermal pastes are sort of gooey mixtures that you spread on the CPU heat spreader to increase cooling efficiency. By introducing this element to the cooling equation, we make sure that all of the heat generated by the CPU is equally dissipated along the surface of the heatsink. The same goes for GPUs, but these are more often used for CPUs, so we'll just be referring to CPUs from now on to avoid having to repeat the phrase CPU and or GPU over and over and over again, as that would get really old really fast. In any case, why do you need to do this, you may ask? Well, here's the thing. CPU heat spreaders aren't perfectly flat. Heat sinks aren't perfectly flat. They're still pretty flat, but there are still air pockets left, if only microscopic ones, when we place one on top of the other. And as you probably know, air is simply awful at conducting heat. And that is a fact. If you don't believe us, try frying an egg with a pan lifted slightly off your stove burner. You may get there eventually, but it's going to take a while longer, even with just that one millimeter of air between the pan and the burner. The same logic applies to CPUs and heat sinks. Because the air pockets are present, they impede the heat dissipation. So if you want to maximize cooling, you have to introduce an element that's more efficient at doing this than air, which is where the thermal paste comes in. By filling up the air pockets, the thermal paste acts as an equalizer that facilitates with heat dissipation across the entire area of the heatsink. It's important not to apply too much paste since it's still not better at conducting heat than the heatsink itself, so use a thin layer just to plug up the air pockets. Also, there are many different types of thermal pastes, and the type you use will also play a role in how efficient your cooling will be. The pastes that are more efficient at conducting heat are metal-based, or at least they have traces of metal in them. But the downside to using these pastes is that because they're metal-based, they also conduct electricity. So is this safe? Well, so long as none of the paste spills over onto your motherboard, it's perfectly safe. But if some of it does spill, it can lead to hardware damage. To quote the South Park skiing instructor, if you put too much metal-based thermal paste on your CPU and it splurges out onto the motherboard, you're gonna have a bad time. Accidentally spill some of the paste during the process, gonna have a bad time. Thankfully, there are also thermal pastes that don't conduct electricity. These are usually carbon or ceramic based and are much safer to use. 
So if you're new to PC building or you're simply paranoid about possibly ruining your hard-earned hardware, which no one can fault you for, then you should use one of the other pastes. Of course, there are some trade-offs here. As far as thermal conduction goes, they're not as efficient as metal-based pastes, but they're still way better than nothing. More importantly, they're more than good enough if your only concern is gaming, since gaming PCs are rarely put under the kind of strain that workstations endure on a daily basis. If you're wondering how effective all of these types of thermal pastes are in relation to each other, we've made a whole video dedicated to the best thermal pastes where you can get just that kind of info. This video also contains a tutorial on how to apply thermal paste properly, so definitely check it out if you're thinking of buying some. The link is in the description. Okay, so now that we know what thermal paste is, let's take a look at thermal paths. How exactly are they different? Well, for starters, their state of aggregation is different. They still do the same job, and in a very similar manner too, but whereas thermal pastes are liquid, or pasty if you'd prefer, thermal pads are solid. They're solid sheets of thermally conductive materials such as silicone. This has its upsides, but it also has its downsides. The biggest upside is that they're easier to apply and offer zero chances of screw-up. With thermal paste, you can put too little or too much paste, and both of these mistakes bear negative results. But with pads, you just put the pad on and you're done. They're also easier to replace. Just take the old pad out and replace it with the new one. No need to remove the old, dried-up paste while worrying about how you're not supposed to damage the CPU. But because these pads are solid, they can't fill the air pockets as well as paste can, which in turn means that they simply aren't as efficient. They also need to be replaced more often than thermal paste, which negates the benefit of not having to clean the heat spreader and heat sink after every use. In any case, thermal pads are a good way to help keep your CPU cooler, no pun intended. They're just not a great way. And while they are cheaper, the fact that you have to change them more often negates this, so the cost of using each evens out in the long term. Thermal pads used to be a lot more popular, but they've fallen out of favor with PC builders recently. Nowadays, they're more often used by manufacturers for VRAM cooling. Nevertheless, if you want to do something to improve the cooling efficiency of your CPU cooler and you don't want to bother with thermal pastes, thermal pads are a great option. And that about does it for this video. To summarize, if you need a product that'll help bring down the temperature of your CPU and that's applied directly to the CPU, you've got two options thermal pastes and thermal pads. Anything else is just a different name for one of these two things. Thermal pastes are more efficient, but they're also a bit trickier to apply. And you have to be extra careful if you're using metal-based pastes, since these can cause some major problems if they spill onto the motherboard. Again, you can check out the video in the description if you want a recommendation for some of the best thermal pastes around. Thermal pads are easier to use, but not quite as effective. They're slightly cheaper, but given that you need to replace them more often, you really shouldn't let the price dictate your choice. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. If you have, you can let us know by liking it, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a comment. And feel free to share it with your friends if you think they could benefit from watching it. We upload new content every week, so if you want to see more helpful videos like this one, make sure to click on the bell icon as well to get notified whenever a new video gets uploaded. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.